Hello, this is um, a quick video just to show you a bit of maintenance work I'm going to be doing on my solar powered camping trailer. As you can see, it's uh, got the solar panel on the roof. You'll be able to see this on the other videos that I've done. I've already started to dismantle it. Um, at the front here, you can see the one battery. This is a 12 volt um, leisure battery, 110 amps. There were originally two here, but I've taken uh, taken one off to recondition because the batteries have uh, been on charge for a long time not really been used and uh, needed topping up and a little bit of work doing on them so it's time to do a bit of maintenance so I'm just going to show you a few bits that I'm doing okay so you'll have to forgive the noise if there's a bit of wind on the microphone but basically this is the trailer now you'd have seen this on the other videos hopefully um, it's quite a simple simple idea if I just turn it around to face you the idea is that we have a towable trailer with a 12 volt 100 watt solar panel which goes on the top and this is hinged so when you're on site using a very technical piece of wood here we can prop it up towards the sun and that's how it works. This solar panel charges up the batteries out of the front and gives you the power that you need to, uh, to power an inverter or lighting pumps for your air beds, anything like that. That's the idea behind this. What I found is though that I've not really used this much this year so far and having the batteries connected constantly and the solar panel which is a bit dirty, having this constantly connected it's, uh, it's kind of kept the batteries boiling away, uh, done a bit of damage to them. So I've reviewed the batteries that I'm using, um, I can I can repair the batteries, that's not much of a problem, but I don't think I need two. A 220 amp hour battery, which is the 210s combined in parallel. It's a lot of power which I've never really used, uh, plus the extra weight towing it around, I don't think it's necessary. So what I've decided to do is to just have the one battery. This battery here that I've got at the moment, this one here, um, is suffering. I'm going to repair it at some point, but not to the moment. I'm just keeping that on at the moment just to weigh you down whilst I yeah, do the maintenance. So what I've done, I've disconnected the battery from here um, and I'm going to do a bit of maintenance. Part of that maintenance is be wiring it and I'll show you why in a moment. If we open it up, again, all very technical, more bits of wood popping it up. Inside, we've got all the main control gears. So a closer look then, inside, the first thing you're going to notice is the main solar controller. This solar controller um, is the main sort of brains behind it all. This is quite a sophisticated one in that it actually monitors using a little thermometer in here, the temperature. Because depending on the temperature will depend on the type of charge and the current and uh, such like the, uh, the battery will receive. So this is going to monitor the power. You can change these settings so you can have a maximum charge rate. Um, and you can constantly monitor the voltage and the current going in and the current going out. Next to it we've got the DC to AC inverter. This is what gives me the, uh, the 240 volts. It's peak rated at 600 watts, uh, which is then connected to two double socket, or well, a double socket here, which leads through to the back, which will then also charge, uh, or sorry, power under the charger socket at the back. Next to it, We've just got um, a row of 12 volt cigar lighter type socket outlets. That's what I use for the portable fridge to go in when I want to keep that running. The fridge normally goes this part of the trailer here, but I'll take it out in the moment just uh, for a few trials. One of the issues I have with this is the, uh, the amount of current that's drawn from the battery, particularly for the inverter. Uh, I wasn't really using very good cable. Um, some of the cable I was using was this here. Now this is originally the cable that came with the solar panels itself. Um, when it's connected to the battery, uh, this uh, inverter directly to the battery, uh, really you needed something a bit more substantial. I needed a bit more, uh, uh, a higher gauge cable to, uh, to cope with that. So one of the projects also, uh, the next day or so, is to rewire the main battery to this unit here. The cable going from here to the battery is fine. It doesn't have to be a great lot because the maximum you're going to get from 100 watt is approximately 9 amps. Uh, that's more than ample. Um, however, um, the cable going from the battery to the inverter 
you're going to want a much thicker gauge than that um, or else you're going to get quite a bit of loss with the loss you're going to get resistance with the resistance you're going to get heat with heat you're going to get more resistance and if you're not careful you can have a fire you can have a meltdown of the cables um, but before we get to that stage obviously it doesn't run as efficiently as it should do so we're going to replace the cables anyway it's very very rare that i plug more than sort of 100 watts 200 watts in here anyway so 600 watts uh, it's, uh, it's a bit higher than I need, but uh, it's better to have a lot than a little. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So that's going to be rewired as well. Just a quick look at the back. Down here in this corner, this is where the cables come through. And as you can see, by looking at these, this is the cable that I've been using to, uh, to supply the main uh, inverter. Not very good, not adequate at all. I need something thicker something better quality something that will carry a higher current than this cable will and uh, i think i found the solution a nice cheap solution to a better cable so after going around various shops electrical wholesalers and retailers trying to find some cable um, i saw some cable but it's very expensive and the problem with that expensive cable is it came in reels that they wouldn't cut down to size for me also um, it was sometimes quite thick very hard to manipulate, it's quite a stiff cable, I needed something more flexible to enable me to go through the holes and round the bends and everywhere that I'm going to be planting the wires on the trailer. Um, having a flat battery one day made me realise when I got out my jump leads from the car, why not use jump leads? These jump leads would be perfect, £6.99 it cost for these, um, two and a half metres in length and if I'm to believe what it says on the packet, carry up to 400 amps. There's no way I'm going to be using 400 amps in these cables. Going straight from the battery, straight to the DC to AC inverter. Yeah, you're going to be drawing quite a bit if you use the full 600 watt that it's rated at, but I won't be going anywhere near that. But that's a nice, good size, comfortable cable to use. Um, it's nice and flexible. It'll fit in the areas I need it to fit in. Um, absolutely perfect. So that's going to be the next project. Just got to cut off these clips, wire them in, and that's going to do the job nicely. The next issue was the battery. Now, the battery that I've been using, I've been using two. Um, they're 12 volts, they're like marine battery, leisure batteries, um, rated at 110 amp hours each. Two of those batteries wired in parallel, still gives you 12 volts DC, but it doubles the amount of current, which would give you up to 220 amp hour. That's a lot of current, that's a lot of power. And to be honest with you, uh, I've been camping a lot with this trailer, and I've never been in a situation where I've run the battery down or I've run out of power. Um, because I'm trying to cut down on weight in that trailer as well, I've thought, do I really need two batteries? Bearing in mind that during the day, the solar panel is constantly charging the, uh, the batteries up. So, you know, do I need to store that much power? During the day, um, if anything's gonna be plugged in, it's gonna be the fridge. Well, the fridge is only a 40 watt um, uh, fridge. Um, so, if you've got full sun capacity, that's going to be giving you 100 watts from the panel. Uh, you're still going to be charging the battery, uh, as well as having enough power there to power the fridge. So I've decided, let's do away with one of the batteries. Let's just have one battery. Uh, it gives me greater, greater um, uh, weight to play with in the trailer, um, and it should be a little bit easier to wire in as well with, uh, with less connections. So the battery was the next thing I needed to look at. Now, one thing I noticed was that because the trailer um, is constantly outside, I don't have a cover on the panel, so the panel is always giving me electricity, going through the um, charge controller and going straight to the battery. Now, after a while, once the batteries are charged, it just flow charges, but even keeping a battery on flow charge isn't necessarily a good thing to do, because after a while, it virtually boils the water um, away out of the, uh, the cells. So what I've had to do is to try and bring the battery back to life. It wasn't holding a charge um, and it wasn't even charging properly. It was telling me that on the little LED indicators. So I had to do a bit of maintenance work. I'm not going to do a video on how to restore or how to do maintenance on a battery because to be honest, I've, I've already done that now anyway. But there's a lot of videos out there. So if you want to know how to maintain and just top up a battery, have a look at videos on YouTube. There's plenty of them. However, it's as simple as getting yourself some battery top-up water. Now, battery top-up water is purely 
pure water. That's all it is. It's effectively distilled water. And the idea is that you want water with no minerals in whatsoever. Now you can either buy um, a container of this. I think this cost me about two or three pounds from, uh, from Halfords. Many places sell it. You can make it yourself just by boiling water, collecting the steam, turning that into water uh, by distilling it. Um, I didn't have the time or the patience to do that. So I just went out and bought some for a couple of quid. Why not? It's easier, saves a lot of time. The other thing is you need a decent funnel and a measuring jug. Bought those, I've got them now. So next time I want to do my other batteries, I've got the stuff ready. Let's have a look at the battery now. So here we are. This is the battery that I've been using. This is the battery that I've done the maintenance work on and managed to bring up to scratch. Now, on the top, you've got the, uh, the little screw terminals that take you straight through to the cells. Each cell is two volts. So all together, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. That's your 12 volt battery there. Once these have been topped up, put the lids back on, make sure you've got the water up to the correct measure, then you're ready to charge. Now it takes, I've noticed probably about three or four decent charges to get the battery up to scratch. I'm now at the stage now where I've charged it overnight for a couple of days, uh, run it down, never go past uh, 10 volts. When you're draining a battery, you don't ever go past 10 volts because anything beyond that, you could do a bit more damage. So I make sure I monitor it constantly. At the moment, I'm on 13.24 volts. I'm currently running a portable fridge, the fridge I go camping with. This is the fridge that uh, I use here. Camping. Folds up, opens up. You can take the lid off, inside you can go straight to your bottles. Um, you've got your fan there, you've got your controller switch here. This one will go uh, cold, off, and then if you want to heat up, you can do it, it'll heat up as well. But I keep it on cold, obviously, because that's why I use it as a fridge. This one is uh, 12 volts, and current on this one's about 40 watts. So this is the, uh, the heaviest item, uh, current-wise, that I'll use on the battery. So for the last, uh, I would say, five hours, I've been running this battery here off this fridge, um, just trying to get the battery used, uh, trying to get it to a good workable state. And so far, I've noticed that it's working. Um, like I say, it's been on for several hours now, this battery, powering up this fridge, and I'm still on 13.24 volts. So I think I'm now at the stage where the battery's working okay. Um, I'm going to give it uh, one last charge after this and then I'm going to connect it up to the uh, trailer outside. So there we have it. Those are the projects that I need to be doing over the next few days and I will of course be videoing them for YouTube. Um, one of the things that I do need to do which I've not shown you is to connect an isolator switch. Because like I explained, when it's outside not being used, it's just constantly charging the battery. Now the charge controller does a very good job, however, there's still current floating around going into the battery, which I don't want. So I'm going to possibly put two isolator switches in. An isolator switch for the main battery itself, so I can isolate the battery from all the components on the trailer, and also an isolator switch from the solar panel. This means that when I'm working and doing maintenance on the, uh, the trailer unit, uh, I can isolate the battery and the solar panel, which means I can work on there without any voltage floating around whatsoever. So those are quite important things, and those are things I should have thought about and should have done at the time. Um, but you live and learn. Um, this has proved to be a bit of a costly uh, mistake to have made. However, it's not all lost. We've managed to recover one of the batteries. Uh, I shall still work on the other battery to get that one up to scratch as well, and I can probably use that as a spare battery, uh, possibly even use it in this workshop or something. I do have smaller solar cells I can use um, and have it connected up to make use of to keep charged and uh, to power the devices. So it's not lost at all. So there we go. That's what I'm going to be doing for the next few days. Now today, typically enough, we've had our weeks of summer. Uh, now it looks like we're getting rain again and the, uh, the British summer is going to be disappearing very, very quickly. We'll see what the weather's like and if I can get some filming done outside with all this then I will do. So please call back again, have a look for the next videos that I'll be doing. Any questions, any uh, ideas or recommendations, please feel free. I don't, don't claim at all to be an expert on these matters and if I've said something that's, uh, that's incorrect, uh, please uh, feel free just to uh, message me or put a comment on. Uh, I'm open to any suggestions and the idea of this is that 
you know, I'm not here explaining or giving a, an instructional video or tutorial video on how to do it. I'm just showing you what I've done and how I've done it. Yeah, there's probably better ways, probably neater ways. Let me know and we'll see whether I can work on those. It's all about learning, isn't it? Okay, so thanks for watching and please call back again soon.